Good morning, buenos dias. You guys awake this morning? Okay, just making sure. I, I struggled this morning uh, getting up. You know, uh, Mike, to, to your uh, presentation here and acknowledging uh, the graph here, you know, we, we, we usually say that um, a picture is worth a thousand words, and in this case, a picture is worth a billion dollars. And uh, quite frankly, when we look at that uh, 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 amount of uh, dollars uh, going out and how we look at uh, investing and reinvesting, uh, specifically on renewables, I mean, that, 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 that picture really captures it as far as for me on how we need to be turning the tide. Uh, before I begin on my presentation, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, uh, publicly thank Ann Hancock and the uh, Climate Protection Campaign, their staff and their board, for uh, truly being a vision, uh, uh, truly being visionaries here in this county, uh, and being uh, a force to be reckoned with in getting local policy, uh, policymakers, elected officials, in really pushing climate protection, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, at the forefront of how we look at policy uh, making here in Sonoma County. So, and I do appreciate your uh, your personal effort and uh, those of the Climate Protection Campaign. So just real briefly here, as far as Sonoma County's vision for the future, if you can take a look at this slide, uh, we are taking what we're describing as a broad uh, countywide approach to transforming our local economy here and being uh, uh, from, from, from its dependence upon outside fossil, uh, fossil fuel and fossil energy sources. Uh, some of those examples included in our regional efforts uh, include a program that is intended to make the county uh, ready for electric vehicles by installing charging stations throughout uh, the cities and county areas. In fact, this, uh, this uh, Saturday I had the opportunity to uh, participate in the Rose Parade with Supervisor Zane in a 100% uh, electric vehicle, the Nissan LEAF. And as I was coming into the parade and, and parking at the uh, main parking structure uh, there next to the cinemas downtown, I realized that they had these electric charging stations uh, as part of this infrastructure. And I didn't realize, it didn't really hit me that when we're looking at, uh, at changing the way we look at fossil fuels and reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, specifically from car emissions, that we need to install and build this infrastructure to be ready for the future of how we look at vehicles. We have aggressively uh, converted our county fleet to, uh, to electric. Uh, in fact, we are one of the uh, largest uh, fleets in the nation that has uh, uh, done so here uh, in the United States. We've launched a countywide uh, building retrofit program using the Amer American Recovery and Reinvestment Act monies or the stimulus monies, uh, as well as developing and implementing a very innovative water and energy efficiency finance program using water bills. And in fact, that was the first in the state here in California. We recently in Sonoma County installed a 1.4 megawatt fuel cell which will offset the county's uh, power use as well as natural gas use needed to heat uh, buildings in our county complex. Just to give you a sense of what this means, uh, the fuel cell in conjunction with an array of efficiency measures and facility upgrades uh, reduces and replaces 13.4 million kilowatt hours from, PG &E, from the PG&E grid uh, and additionally reduces water consumption by 19 million gallons per year. Uh, when speaking about uh, local government, and, and, and this is a, a doesn't only incorporate the County of Sonoma, but how we uh, work in conjunction with our city partners. Uh, when folks look at Sonoma County, outside observers see us uh, as having a high degree of alignment with our cities, with our municipalities, with the county, uh, in working with businesses, in working with government, but also working with our local community. You know, the cooperative relationships, I believe, are really going to allow us to streamline the decision-making process. There was a question asked earlier today from a professor from Sonoma State University. And I think this alignment, this leadership and alignment is really key and vital to ensuring further success and moving forward. But we must recognize that we have to look uh, above the crowd. We have to look beyond Sonoma County. And in Sonoma County, the, the Board of Supervisors and the Water Agency has taken a cutting edge approach in addressing the issues to how do we maximize the investment, not only here locally, but also leapfrog the, a, what we're describing as an incremental approach to energy security. We are harnessing the best minds around uh, to help uh, us develop this diverse portfolio of renewable energy. Uh, some examples of these partnerships include the uh, National Labs, the uh, National Oceanog uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, UC Berkeley's Energy Resources Group, as well as the Goldman School of Public Policy and the private sector. 
and help describe, in fact, I think, Anne, you did uh, the, the, the main part of my presentation, and I, I, I appreciate that leading in. Uh, some of the uh, uh, initiatives that we have uh, embraced here in Sonoma County, uh, Anne mentioned the Sonoma County Energy Independence Program. This is our PACE program, Property uh, Assessed Clean Energy Program. And to date, uh, we have financed over $42 million in local, uh, in projects here for local property owners. Uh, Applied Solutions is a nonprofit uh, that was started by Sonoma County as a nationwide effort to align local governments uh, and developing integrative, sustainable uh, infrastructure, but also look at the financing and the financial tools available to develop them. One of the things we've encountered here at the local level is one of our biggest obstacles in developing these renewable infrastructures has become the financing. Applied Solutions is intended to help break that obstacle of finding financing mechanisms to get us to where we need to be. Um, Anne mentioned the, uh, the, the RESCO, the uh, um, uh, uh, Renewable Energy Secure Communities Project, uh, and really focusing on that and helping us move, uh, uh, move ahead. Being one of the largest energy users in the county, uh, we have a goal for the Sonoma County Water Agency to be carbon free by 2015. And to get there, there are a number of renewable projects that are in development uh, that are intended to get us there. Many of you have heard of the Farms to Fuel Project. This is the uh, chicken poop or chicken waste. Uh, project that you may have read about. This is intended to produce biogas and electricity uh, through a 1.4 megawatt fuel cell. We have a 2 megawatt solar uh, uh, currently installed and we're working on an additional 5 to 20 megawatts uh, at the county airport. We uh, are partnering with Sonoma Compost, one of our great local providers here, and I see Will Bax uh, in the audience. Uh, and uh, this is the company that handles the county's green waste and we will soon generate an additional one megawatt of green energy at the county's landfill, uh, tapping what we're seeing as an underutilized energy generating facility there. Uh, earlier this year, the Board of Supervisors uh, invested in a feasibility study for a uh, community choice aggregation initiative. Uh, we believe that one path to realize our reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and our, our, our goals to become energy uh, uh, sustainable and self-reliable we believe that this vision uh, could be achieved by aggregating the county's electrical load through the development of community choice aggregation, which is a public entity and, and utilizes the purchasing, uh, the, the, the purchasing power, economies of scale uh, of a block of customers to allow to have that bulk purchasing of clean power. In 2002, California legislation enabled AB uh, 117, which allowed cities and counties to uh, have the right to create CCAs or as Anne has described, Sonoma Clean Power. If the community chooses to do so, it can have the power to procure electricity, set rates, and sell bonds to invest in local renewables. Uh, transmission, distribution, maintenance, uh, and billing infrastructure does remain with the existing utility, and in our local case, that would be PG&E. So how this works, um, again, I mentioned that earlier this year, we authorized staff to conduct a feasibility study to assess uh, not only the value, but also the practicality of what a CCA in this county might look like. Uh, and I would actually challenge uh, the audience today and the audience this morning and challenge uh, our, our, our own employees to look at this as an opportunity. We've, the feasibility study isn't intended to be a feasibility study of understanding whether it could work or it can't work. I think communities have demonstrated that it can work. The question is, how are we going to make it work? and what uh, uh, resources and tools we need to set forth to get there uh, in order to do that. Uh, there are uh, potential benefits uh, that, as described here. We're looking at green jobs, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, local control, system stability and resilience, competitive rates, and, first, and, and, and lastly, uh, customer choice. Uh, it was described earlier that uh, we see fossil fuel consumption uh, at, at, at over a billion dollars here uh, in this area. And if we can just capture a small part of that investment, we also see uh, close to half a million uh, dollars leave our county every year in utility payments. Just capturing a small part of that investment can really help catapult us to focusing on renewable energy and renewables. But with any new endeavor and any new initiative, uh, there are potential risks. Uh, some risks, uh, and I think some of the biggest risks uh, specific to this arena, are related to cost, both the startup and the ongoing cost. Uh, if the utility, uh, if there's an opposition of a creation of a CCA, uh, this could be expensive for us to move forward or for us to, uh, uh, to grapple with. If too many customers opt out, uh, the CCA may not be uh, fiscally or financially viable. 
So we hope that the feasibility study is going to reveal uh, that this is um, a good financial investment for the county. Again, from my personal perspective, I think it's not an if we're able to do it, it's a how we're going to be able to do it. I think I was given my one uh, minute time frame, so at this point, uh, We've shared with you some initiatives that are ongoing here in Sonoma County. We are very proud uh, of those initiatives uh, and, and those efforts taking place. And I think that we do have some coordination and collaboration and really efficiencies in working together. But that said, if we are to meet the challenge of climate protection, if we are to meet the challenge of ensuring that everyone does profit from this, as the uh, conference title describes, there is a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. I think I, in, in the, the earlier presentation and in, in seeing the, uh, um, the, the, the figures and seeing the changes, I think it's a reminder for us that there's more to achieve. There's, more to, there's definitely more to learn and that we are in the infancy stages of, uh, of, of understanding climate change. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the challenge itself, I think it's something that we're willing to take on. So I appreciate the time this morning and we look forward to answering questions. I'll take the easy ones and we'll take the tough ones.